Welcome back, lasses and lads. My name is Tomo, and we are continuing with this exciting Tamiya 1 to 70 second scale model of a Spitfire Mark 5B. In this video, we're going to be finishing up this bad boy. And before I applied this paint, I applied three coats, three generous coats of Warren Effects fluid on top of the metallic finish. I let it dry and then I applied this paint. Again, using thin layers. Thin is the key because we're going to be hand painting camouflage now. And a, this is more of an artistic expression on how the camouflage is supposed to be. It's not exactly how it is on the real thing because I didn't really want to bother with the templates. So I just went freestyle. And also the two paints that I'm using are not exactly Royal Navy paints, they're more of what if Germans would paint camouflages on British aircraft, so It's an interesting choice, I think But it turns out pretty well in the end, I think But yeah, this is how I do it For those of you who are not familiar with Warren Effects fluid This bottle This is actually an acrylic medium that you brush or airbrush onto a model and it helps you to create the worn paint effects. It's not like chipping fluid where, where paint chips come off in big chunks. It's more of a refined medium where you can simulate scratches and wear and tear and such on surfaces. And you activate it by using a stiff brush and water. Once the water seeps through the paint, it activates the fluid and it thus creates the scratches that you see on screen right now. I also want to try and modulate the painted surfaces with a whiter shade of the base color. So I masked off certain portions of panels and just spray painted a lighter version of the base color on top. I thinned down the paint to such extent that I had more control over the shade of the paint that I was painting over. So I would go heavier or lighter depending on the mood at that particular second of painting. Thus, I was able to create a much more interesting surface to look at. Unfortunately, it's on the bottom of the aircraft, so if you don't turn it around, you're never gonna see it, but it was practiced and I loved every second of it. On some surfaces, I went freestyle and just highlighted certain panels that I couldn't just mask off because it would be too difficult. And the end result looks pretty worn and messy, and that's how I like it. On the upper surfaces on the two-tone camouflage, I use the same method using a very thin brush and then just use the base color along with the whiter version of that base color and just outline some of the edges of the panel gaps and panel lines and such to simulate wear and tear on the surface. In the model kit you get decals to put on the leading edge, but I didn't want to put decals on the leading edge because I wanted to simulate wear and tear. So I masked off the leading edge, painted it in flat aluminium and mixed my own yellow paint, which is more of a yellow orange paint and then spread it on the leading edge. Then I masked off the leading edge again, this time painting it in red where the gun ports are. After that I took off the masking and proceeded to scratch off the paint to reveal the aluminium on the bottom so to get this beautiful effect of a worn leading edge. Uh, the decals. In this model kit you get quite a few decals actually because of the different paint schemes and the decals themselves are pretty nice but they're a little bit on the thicker side so having a strong decal fluid like mark fit strong is recommended however looking back now i would recommend that you just mask off the thickness of the line and spray paint it or airbrush paint it and um, that way you 
you won't have to attach these long decals because they can be a bit of a pain to attach. Well, align and attach. After I attached all the decals, I spray the whole model with satin varnish. The propeller. That is another topic in the book of facts about aircraft and I really wanted to try this one out. I first took off the propeller from the screw, cleaned it off and then proceeded to paint it as I would from the instructions. I painted the nose in XF21. And after the paint was dry, I drew on it with a soft pencil to simulate scratches on the nose. Note that the nose is metallic, but the propeller blades themselves are not. They are wooden, so to make a metallic finish on the blades, would be a little bit misleading. To make the nose comb of the propeller more interesting, I mask off the upper portion of the nose comb and use a fine soft brush along with black pigment to make, to make the lower portion a little bit darker and grimier. Like I mentioned, the propeller blades on a Spitfire are not made from metal, they are wooden. So you have to take this into account when weathering. I first applied a generous coat of flat black. Then I painted the tips in typical yellow, using the same paint as on the leading edge. Then I took this basalt grey, thinned it down with water and lightly sprayed over the surface of the propeller blades in the direction of movement so that I would simulate surface grime on the propeller blades. To complete the look I used the same paint but this time raw right out of the bottle and just and lightly brushed it onto the propeller tips to simulate paint chips. And this is how the finished result looks like. Pretty convincing, if I say so myself. To pronounce the panel lines on the aircraft, I used panel liner from Tamiya, which I mixed with brown, black and a little bit of grey, and just placed it on with a brush like you see here. After it dried, I removed it using white spirits and a soft cloth. Cool. 
note that I'm trying to remove the excess panel line in the direction of flight so that I get a realistic finish. And now the landing gear. I cut out the pieces from the sprue, cleaned them off and assembled them like you see here. Then I proceed to paint them in the appropriate colors. With the black panel liner I highlighted the shadows and with super chrome I painted this shock to make it shiny. The exhausts also got a nice paint treatment using a dark brown first to make the base color. But then I used orange brown to highlight the tips and make a little splash here and there to just break off the monotony of the dark brown. A bit of black panel liner to highlight the shadows. and flat black to simulate soot on the end of the exhausts. At the very end I sprayed flat varnish on the exhaust. The last two pieces to be attached on the model are the antenna mast and the stretch sprue antenna wire that attaches from the mast to the tail and the previously broken off airspeed indicator on the bottom of the right wing. And there we have it, the model is complete. Thank you so very much for watching if you have been. Thank you for liking, commenting, sharing and subscribing. I'll see you soon in the next one and enjoy the rest of this video. Bye bye!